it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. and Pastor Cynthia Wallace. Uh, she is the Executive Director of the Oasis Project, the Community and Economic Development Division of Bible Center Church. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, she, uh, uh, Bible Center Church has been um, in Homewood since 1956. Um, and Dr. Wallace and her husband, who is also um, a pastor at uh, the Bible Center Church, um, have uh, are both from the Pittsburgh area and grew up in uh, Homewood in Pittsburgh. So with all of that, I would like you to give a very warm, emphatic school to career welcome to Dr. Cynthia Wallace. Hi. It's nice having you here, hi. All right, so we're freezing here a little bit, hopefully not. I switched to my cell phone, so maybe I'll have a little stronger um, signal. I'm gonna share my screen. Um, hold on one second here. Super, so can everybody see that? Yes. Thumbs up, okay, so um, just so excited to be here and I'm gonna tell you guys all about my, my career and education journey. By the time we're done, you're gonna know more about me than you ever wanted to know, but hopefully um, you'll be inspired. Um, just another career path. I know you guys have, you know, so, have heard about so many careers, but um, I think that I've had a pretty interesting journey. So you guys can let me know um, when we're done what you think about that. But um, Jeremy did say, and so there was one thing in his introduction that he said that was incorrect. So hold on here one second. I'm just gonna get to present here. I'm sorry. No, no, well, it's okay. Jeremy said I was from Pittsburgh, but I'm not. <laughs> so my mother actually grew up in Homewood, and but she moved to Flint, um, Flint, Michigan. She grew up in, in Homewood, went to Westinghouse. And so I was actually born in Michigan. And so I um, grew up in Flint. If you guys know, that's where this big water crisis has been going on for the last mm -hmm. couple of years. But um, I grew up there, went to the Flint, it was Flint Community Schools is what we, um, we call them, you know, Flint Public Schools. And um, pretty typical, um, just, you know, elementary, middle school, high school journey was involved in lots of extracurriculars. This is my picture. I'm um, in high school. I was, I was on the Pom Pom Squad. Um, I had after school jobs. I worked at a shoe store called Connie Shoes. And so that was my first real job. Um, and then my grades were, were, uh, were pretty good. And I think I'm, just, I'm saying that because it's in, like school is important. <laughs> so I thought I, I put that, that plug in there. And so I, um, I left Flint. I won't, I'm not going to tell you guys how old I am. I had a, a, a young man um, guess my birthday was actually Wednesday. And he guessed he started with 59 and then went to 70. And he's like, you shouldn't have all that gray hair in your head. So I'm not even going to tell you guys. Any day. <laughs> you have to love the babies, right? <laughs> But um, I left um, Flint and after I graduated from high school and I went to the University of Chicago, um, which is in Chicago, Illinois for undergrad. And um, University of Chicago is, um, I'd say a pretty good school. And so my first kind of um, piece of advice, and I'm gonna give you little tidbits as we, we go along with the presentation is that you need to go to the best school that you can. And so in terms of where you can get in, because um, the reputation of the school, the college that you go to will make a big difference. And so, um, like I said, University of Chicago, pretty good school um, in the Midwest. That's where I want it to be. Um, and I'd also say, think a lot about school debt, right? Because there are a lot of people now, they are so burdened by um, school debt, like the school loans that they take out so that even when they finish school, they can't do things like get a house and other things because they're paying back so much school debt. And so I really encourage you, this is where the, the good grades really makes a difference because if you want to go to school and you even have pretty good grades, you'll be able to find somebody that will help pay for your, um, for your education. And so um, I think the other piece as it relates to my college journey is You'll probably go to school. I went to school thinking, I don't know why, that I wanted to be a dentist. Um, I, I took a class called organic chemistry. After that, it was clear I wasn't going to be a dentist. And get this, like any kind of blood or anything like that, it turns my stomach. So what in the world was I thinking that I wanted to be a dentist? So it is okay, you know, to think like, oh, I'm going to be this. I'm going to do that. 
you will change your mind and it is perfectly okay. And we'll see just in my um, presentation a little bit, I shifted gears a couple times, you know, in my career and it is absolutely um, okay for that to, to happen. So uh, let's see here, I'm gonna forward here. And so career path. So um, was in college and discovered just through um, a part-time job that I took, I um, worked at a place called the Chicago Clinic for Child Development. And really I saw like a flyer on the wall. I was a student, it was, there was something that I could do after classes. And it was working with children who, it was kind of like tutoring, I'll say. I didn't know before that point that I wanted anything to do with kids. I had not babysat, I had not done anything, but I fell in love with children and education. I also took um, some classes and I'm trying to think, I think it was through one of the extracurriculars I did in college was there was, it was called the um, Organization for Black Students. And so through there, there were like some alumni from the college and we got hooked up with mentors. And a person who mentored me was actually a principal in the Chicago public schools. And so being connected with this, um, you know, this part-time job, having this woman who was was a you know African American woman and a principal. She mentored me, and so from that, I just realized that I wanted to do something in education. So um, you know, I I did some volunteering, I did some internship work, but that's really what kind of solidified. You know, like I think this is what I want to do. So um, after I and, and I discovered this, unfortunately, you know, kind of pretty close to the end of my time in college, and so I didn't get a degree an undergraduate degree in um, education. My degree was actually in behavioral sciences, which is kind of like psychology. And so I knew I was gonna have to go to, to grad school or to get at least a teaching certificate if I wanted to teach. So um, fast forward, I finished college. My husband and I um, got married and we moved to Ann Arbor, Michigan. So we moved from Chicago to Ann Arbor, Michigan. And that's where um, I went to graduate school and started kind of my path on teaching. And so I have a, a picture up here of a classroom because the first job that I took was as a preschool teacher, um, which is something I could do while I worked on my teaching certificate. Because if you wanna be a teacher in the public schools, you have to have um, a teaching certificate. So I went to the University of Michigan. I actually got um, a degree in educational administration because I knew eventually I thought I wanted to be a school principal. So I did that. And then I started teaching. Um, after I got my teaching certificate, I took a job in the Ann Arbor Public Schools. And so I taught there. I taught kindergarten. Uh, I taught fifth grade first and then kindergarten. Um, and I was there for five years. And then um, I was promoted from kindergarten teacher to principal. And so my first job as a principal was, um, you know, in the Ann Arbor Public Schools. And it was interesting because, you know, your education kind of, you know, prepares you for the things that you want to do. So even though I was teaching kindergarten, I had gone to school, if you remember the slide previously, to the University of Michigan. I got a master's degree in school administration. So when they said they're looking for a principal, I have the qualifications needed um, to take that position. So I was in that position and then fast forward. So um, I started having children, my husband and I. And so even though I thought that um, the Ann Arbor Public Schools were great, it was a great place to work, it was a great place to teach, I did not think that the schools were good enough for my children um, because unfortunately, um, as happens in a lot of school districts, I did not feel like my children as African-American children were going to be seen in a positive light. I did not think that they were going to get the educational opportunities that I wanted them to have. And so what I did was I actually left my position with the Ann Arbor Public Schools and I started a school. And the school that I started was Genesis Christian Academy. And so I worked with the people at my church um, in, at the time it was Ypsilanti, which is a city that's right next to Ann Arbor. But um, I started a school and started with a preschool and it grew through an elementary school. And so um, I moved them from the, the position as a principal in the Ann Arbor Public Schools to being the principal of a school that I started. And I was actually there as principal for 10 years. Um, and so again, I think the, 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 the takeaway here is that if something isn't right, 
you can do something about it, right? If if someplace you're like, you know, I could do it better, you can do it better. So like I said, I was able to to start a school. And I think that um, even after I've been away from that space for a long time, there are so many, there are adults now that come back and tell me what a wonderful place Genesis was and what a difference it's made, you know, in their lives. And so um, I was principal of that school for um, 10 years. And then my husband, who did grow up in, um, in Pittsburgh, um, he was a professor at the University of Michigan and also a young adult pastor. And so um, the church that he grew up in is Bible Center Church, which was started in Homewood. Jeremy shared that in 1956. But in the early 2000s, about 2003, my husband's grandfather, who founded the church, um, actually, his grandfather father died. And my husband said, you know, I really feel called to move us back um, to Pittsburgh. And so um, Trinity's asking me what school I was principal at. And so I was principal first Trinity at um, in Ann Arbor. It was Northside Elementary with the Ann Arbor Public Schools. And then I started um, a school in Michigan, um, Genesis Christian Academy. And then my next slide, I'm going to tell you where I was in Pittsburgh. But this is a slide, this is the transition. So you can see here the, um, the Ann Arbor News, which is a newspaper in Ann Arbor, did a story when I was leaving, um, leaving Ypsilanti, um, saying that, you know, I'm moving from Ypsilanti, moving to, um, to Pittsburgh. And so when I moved to Pittsburgh, I took about a year off to kind of get my, my family settled. I have four children and it was a big move for all of them. And so I took a year off to get them settled. But then what, um, what um, happened was, and Trinity, I'm gonna ask, uh, no, that's Nikoya. I'm gonna ask the answer a question. Yes, about um, getting it up and running. So we'll talk about that in two seconds. Um, so I got them settled and then I was at home in my kitchen and um, Mark Roosevelt, who was the superintendent at the time when I was in Pittsburgh, actually called my house. I had not applied for a job, um, but someone who was on the board at the school that I started in Michigan had moved to Boston, knew someone that knew the superintendent, and he actually called and he said, hey, I, I hear that you're, you're a good principal. We need good principals in the, you know, the Pittsburgh public schools you know, would you come in for an interview? And so I went in, I talked to um, Superintendent Roosevelt. It was an interview that probably lasted five minutes. And when it was over, he offered me a position. And so um, I guess the lesson there is just do a good job and your, your, rep your reputation will really make way for you, right? And so if you operate with excellence, um, do what you need to do. Um, you don't, because like I said, he called. I had not even applied for a job. Remember, I was home getting my family settled. And so um, anyway, walked in. This is the, the, the school. It was Pittsburgh Montessori, which is located in Friendship. And so I accepted a position. At the time that I was here, I pulled this off of their website. It was actually a pre-K through eighth grade um, school. And so I was there as principal for um, six years. And so I was charged um, when I was there with just kind of helping the school turn around. It's a Montessori school. And so they just needed some things. So I was there for six years and, um, you know, and it was a pretty, uh, pretty good experience. And so um, after those six years, my, our two youngest children are twins. Um, and at that time they were graduating from high school. And, you know, I kind of said to myself, if I'm going to do anything different with my career, now's the time to do it. I won't have kids and, you know, I won't have any children at home. And so um, what I did was I resigned from my position with the, um, you know, with the Pittsburgh Public Schools. And I think another lesson is it's always great to go out on top. You know, I was doing a great job. It was wonderful, but I just wanted to do something different with my life. And so what I did was, um, you know, I re retired early and said, you know, I'm leaving. And then what I did, I went back to school because when I was a principal, I had started a doctoral program at the University of Pittsburgh. But with having four kids and, um, you know, running a school, I had not had the opportunity to finish my dissertation. So I was able to get all the coursework done, but I didn't have a chance, you know, like to do the research and all of that for my dissertation. And so when I left my position, I finished my doctorate. So that was the first thing that I did. And then the second thing that I did, I asked myself, I said, what is it that I really liked about being a principal? And for me, it was working with children and their families, helping them problem solve and things like that. So I actually 
went back to school again and I got a second master's degree. Um, I went to Geneva College and I got a degree in counseling and specifically it's in marriage and family counseling, which you know, would allow me to work with kids and their families if they're having you know, any type of concern. So after all of that, um, leaving, finishing the degree, um, I decided to come on board um, with my church. So um, our church is at Homewood and has always really been kind of an outreach focused church. And I said, well, let me take my administrative skills and use them at my church. And so what um, we started at the church is called the Oasis Project. And so I became the, um, the executive director of the Oasis Project. And so what we do, we do four things. We do education, employment, entrepreneurship and the environment. And so um, through education, and I think the next slide might, might give you a little more detail there. It's two more, hold on one second. So education, we have after school programs um, in two elementary schools. Right now we're running a learning hub. Um, so we have a little over 50 kids that come every day while their um, families start work. We have a transportation company. Um, we have a um, custodian custodial company. It's Oasis Property Maintenance and Management that we do um, cleaning and maintenance for businesses. Um, we have a coffee shop, Everyday Cafe, um, that we run. We also have a farm and fishery um, where we do urban agriculture classes and we grow things using aquaponics and hydroponics. Um, we also just launched a commercial kitchen um, and we do some work with people who want to, um, you know, have businesses. And so this slide will give you a sense of all the areas that are in the OASIS project. And so in my job now as an executive director, um, these are the things that I'm responsible for. And so all of these um, different departments and areas are the things that I'm responsible for now um, as an executive director of this, this nonprofit. And so um, you might ask yourself, so what does, because this, this is a very legit, even though I took kind of a roundabout way, I was a teacher first, then a principal. I actually did some work with my counseling degree. I was actually a school-based therapist. Um, and then now, you know, an executive director of this nonprofit, you might say, you know, what does an executive director of a nonprofit do? Because there are a lot in Pittsburgh, a lot, a lot, a lot of nonprofit organizations. And so primarily my work now is I do a lot of work with community groups. And so we need to find out what do people in Homewood and our community, what do they need? And so I talk to people, I find out what they need. I attend a lot of meetings with other organizations. And so I have a picture up here just from a meeting this morning. Um, so, you know, there's the director of the, the Department of Human Services is on there and the president of Pittsburgh's Urban League is on there and lots of different organizational leaders because we don't do, as a nonprofit, you don't do your work by yourself. You're working with other organizations. And so um, I spend a lot of my time in meetings. I also have a copy here of a, a little, I just cut and paste it where it says giving to grow. I spend a lot of time raising money. And so as an executive director, um, you know, you have to raise money to, to keep your organization going. And so I write lots of grants. Um, we have contracts with um, the Department of Human Services. And so there's a lot of kind of money things that you, you do as an executive director. And then, um, I put just a picture, her letter, our, our, um, letter from our director. I, um, you know, help to write grant reports and really communicate because if you want people to kind of give you money to do the things that you want to do, you need to communicate with them. What is it you want to do? What is it you're doing? And things like that. And then finally, I work with a board um, to develop and implement a strategic plan, which means it's like, what are we going to do in the next two, three years? What are our plans? And then how do I work to make sure that that happens? And so basically, um, that is, um, you know, what I do. Also, as an executive director, you're really the face of the organization. About two weeks ago, we launched um, a commercial kitchen. And so it's a Oasis Community Kitchen. And this is a kitchen that people, so say you're a caterer or you're a, um, you have a food truck, you need to be preparing your food in a commercial kitchen by law. So I know a lot of people do it kind of under the table, 
but um, we have started a community kitchen so that people in the community, if they want to use our kitchen so that they can make their businesses bigger, they'll be able to do that. We also offer some business classes. We call that on our own for um, people who have a business idea. And so we help them kind of think about the finances and you know how to let people know about their business and how should they set their prices and do they need insurance and all of those things. And so um, Own Our Own is our business academy. And so again, as an executive director, you really are kind of the face of, um, of the organization. So I'm gonna stop there and just let you ask me questions but basically that's my career journey and kind of what I do now as an executive director of a nonprofit. That's incredible. I, um, I'm gonna let them get to the questions because we had a couple come in. Um, Trinity asked, oh, she asked about the highest, uh, which were you a principal? Was it hard to get a school started? From the it was really hard. <laughs> it was really hard. Um, because when I started, so first of all, there are a couple of things. Um, there are all kinds of, you know, just rules and regulations about schools, right? So, you know, the type of curriculum that you're using and the space that you have. And so actually, when I started the, the school with my church in Michigan, we actually started as a preschool first and we had to build the building. And so it's, it took a little while. So we had to build the building and then basically we added a grade at a time. So we started with preschool and then when I left, we were up through sixth grade. But, you know, it's the same thing, even with like the nonprofit stuff, we had to raise money for all of that. You're working with a board, um, you know, and a board is, you know, the more people you work with, it's like, you know, someone has an opinion about this and that and the other. So it was a lot of work, but I would absolutely say it was worth it because of the children that came through that school, they were, um, they were so blessed. And so um, the curriculum that we had was based on multiple intelligences. So children mm -hmm. there had, you know, beginning at preschool, they had Spanish classes, they had drama classes, they had music classes, they had, um, we were very big on public speaking. And so I think the things that we really um, poured into them have helped them um, to be really um, just strong adults. And so um, it was a lot of work, but here's a here's just a little something. My next project with the Oasis Project is to start a preschool. So I'm going to start a school here in Pittsburgh. And so um, um, I'm raising the money now for the building piece, but hopefully in the next year or so, we're going to get a preschool off the ground here. Awesome. Excellent. Michael said, what was your favorite college? Oh, my favorite college. Wow. Um that's, that's really hard to say, you know, because I think I was in, I, I was, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you picked on that. I'm, I picked up that I'm kind of an education junkie. Um, Cause I think I was just a different place in my life for each of the places. And they were very different. University of Chicago was um, very rigorous. It was, it was hard, you know, and um, you know, I eat through, <laughs> you know, but it, it was just, it was a really hard school. And then, um, the University of Michigan, um, it was good, but I was a graduate student, so I was kind of not really, you know, on campus. I was married by that time, so it's kind of like I'm just going to take classes. I think probably, I'm going to go with, I think the University of Pittsburgh, when I got my doctorate in um, school leadership, because by that time, I really knew what I wanted to do, and so, you know, I loved the classes that I was taking, and so that was, you know, I think overall, probably the best experience. Geneva was good too. It was just so far. I was driving to Beaver Falls, you know, 45 minutes away, a couple of, so yeah, that was a good question. <laughs> that, was, that was a very good question. And you've had so, you know, such a diverse um, educational background because Geneva yeah. is definitely not like the University right. of Pittsburgh and, you know. Yeah, and I um, think it's important for, for, you know, youth to know, you know, when you are looking for colleges to attend, you know, just like you're, you're going to go to admissions interviews, you interview them too, because you want it to be a good mm -hmm. fit for you. Yeah, you know, um, I went, um, I went to the University of Chicago in retrospect, like now looking back, it probably wasn't the best school for me. Um, I'm a pretty social person. I'm pretty, you know, it was a very small undergraduate program, very rigorous, not for someone who, um, you know, was used to like, oh, I'm doing all this stuff and can just kind of 
study a little bit to get by. It really, it, it was really difficult. So like I said, I made it through, but if I had to look back, I would probably try to find a school that was a better fit with my personality. It's definitely good, good advice. Um, Trinity, and you clarify this if um, I don't get it right. She's, Trinity said, were there kids that didn't behave well um, that you personally changed. Okay. Well, let, me, let me tell you what, Trinity. So I was an elementary school principal for 17 years. You better believe there were children, <laughs> say, well, you know, but um, I mean, I, I have children that I, it's interesting that even at the cafe, we, we, um, the, we operate a cafe. There's a young lady that was a, a student at Pittsburgh Montessori when I was a principal there. And so I um, uh, I'm sure people have um, stories about how, you know, maybe they were changed by something I said. Um, you know, people ask me like about my personality. I say, it's like a mango. I am sweet, but firm. And so I always believe like telling kids, the, you know, the way it is. And so even like, you know, you guys might know. So like, say some kids were going to fight, right? And they would always come, they're going to tell me, Dr. Wallace, so-and-so, and, and I would say, hey, now you have a choice. You can hit them, <laughs> you can do whatever, but I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. Now we can, you know, and sometimes people are like, you know what, it's worth it. If I'm going to, you know, but I've always been very upfront. I tried to be very fair. And I think that that is what, um, you know, the children that I work with appreciated, you know, a, a child would come and they'd say, you know, I just cursed my teacher out. And I say, now, do you think they're going to teach you to read? No, they're not <laughs> because teachers are people too. And so the best thing that you can do would be to get in there and apologize, you know what I mean? And so I think I have always um, treated youth like adults, very straightforward. And I think that they appreciate that, um, you know, and, and again, I have always been fair, you know, kids aren't always wrong and teachers aren't always right. And so um, I think that that was appreciated in my, you know, my time as a principal. Awesome. Okay, Nicoye says, did you have to go around recruiting people or did people just come? And come, are you talking about to the school or are you talking about where? So I meant like for the school that you started already, did people just like in like the community where people like ready just to sign up or like, did you have to go to like the houses or like schools yeah. and present yep, information? Yep, Yep, it was a little bit of both. And so absolutely. And I think it's just like any business. So even as I'm thinking about, you know, starting the preschool here in Pittsburgh, I'm thinking about how I'm going to market, right? And so who are the people that would benefit from a, um, a preschool program? Um, you know, and I, I really want it to be about black and brown children. I really want it to be rigorous. I think that children rise to the occasion. If you expose them to world-class things, their minds open. And so again, I have to find the people that believe in that vision. And those will be the people I said, this is the place for you. And no school, no business is for everybody. And I think for anyone who's thinking, you know, you want to start your own business, everybody won't, won't want what you're selling, right? You just need to find that group of people who wants what you have. And so that's what I had to do with Genesis. That's what I'll have to do with the preschool here. You know, you just find the people that want what it is that you're selling. And so it is, it's marketing. And so it is developing your website, developing written um, materials. It's, you know, figuring out how much people will pay, um, you know, for the service that you're offering. So my question to that, I know here in Pittsburgh, there's a lot of, um, I've been with School to Career for almost 20 years, and I've seen um, programs begin. Uh, one of the, you know, there's some Hill District schools that have started with churches mm -hmm. um, that have, you know, that started off really strong and were very successful. And I think that, you know, the curriculum is very unique, but then they go away. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't know if you've done that type of research. So that was like phase one of my question, because I live in Penn Hills and Penn Hills started Imagine Charter. And I know at the same time Imagine Charter was getting started, um, the Penn Hills School District built all these new schools. So they have right. these empty buildings now. So, yeah. <laughs> so um, you know, you're during that process, you know, how are you, you know, is this more so for your, I know it's your community, but is this rooted in what's happening at the Bible Center where you want to bring this to your membership? Not membership, but to your, you know, your your church. Sure. And I don't 
know. I mean, I think there, there, there may be some people at, um, you know, at our church that will benefit, but I really do feel like there is a space in the market for a high quality preschool program, again, for black and brown children. Um, you think about, you know, preschool programs like Shady Lane or other, you know, other places yes. that unfortunately there can be schools that are good for some segments of the population mm -hmm. that unfortunately sometimes for African-American children, you know, they go there and they're automatically seeing like, well, you're a discipline problem or you're right. something else. And so I think it is important to have a space where children are, um, and, and I'm not saying that in these other places that kids aren't loved and respected, but I do think there is something about having a school where your culture is understood, where yeah. it is celebrated, where regardless of, and so, you know, our zip code is 15208. Uh, right. And a lot of times people are like, oh, you're from Homewood, you must, you know, all of these negative things. And I think it's important to have a place where people can see possibility. It is yeah. not about, you know, what your zip code was, where you were born, any of those things. You have a brain, you are capable. If you, you are given the same experiences that other people are, you can rule the world. And so that's what I would like to instill in children. And so again, I feel like there's a space for that. Absolutely. And I think Homewood is the perfect place for it. Like I said, when we you first came on, I went to Westinghouse and, you know, all these years, not seeing Westinghouse, you know, that Homewood area, that community, you know, well, seeing it develop and, and thrive like it is. So I think that a, a Shady Lane or Sewickley Academy right there in Homewood would be amazing. That's yeah, right. that's right. I think that would yeah. be great. And I mean, and our kids are as, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. So, I mean, really, that's what it's about. You know, we're just right. going to give them a, a, a leg up and they can yes. do it. And so I think yeah. that's the that's the thing. I mean, you did ask about school starting you know, and stopping. And I think that's the same with any business, right? A school mm -hmm. is a business. And so I right. think it is starting with a very strong business plan because mm -hmm. it's not a public school. If I start a school, um, unless, you know, we decide that it would be a charter school and charter schools are public schools. They receive, right. you know, public funding. But if I'm starting a private school, which is preschool, you know, definitely will start as it is tuition based. It's like a business, right? I have a service. I'm selling it to parents in exchange for money, which I then use to pay the teachers and pay the utilities and things like that. And so I think having a very strong business plan is critical. And so, you know, for any business to survive. So, I mean, I have one more question. The kids have a lot. Um, I'm, I'm one of those parents. I put my kid in one of those schools because, you know, I, I wanted her to, you know, to have the best. And it was quite expensive. I mean, so I, I'm not a single parent, but what about those, you know, single parents in Homewood right. that could not afford a yep. private school? You know, Absolutely. is that, is there going to be some education? Because I know you do a lot, you know, for the community as a whole, but is there going to be some education around paying for college, like through the FAME program or oh, Crossroads absolutely. or something to that effect. Oh yeah, definitely. And then I think the other piece is really looking at, I'm looking at a mixed model for, yeah. so whether it is a sliding income or yeah. whether there are, you know, so I have to raise funds so that we can scholarship some children because the thing that would be really sad is that if we started a preschool and no children in Homewood could attend, right. <laughs> you know, yeah. that would be sad. <laughs> and so it really is looking at how we can, um, you know, offer some sort of mixed tuition, you know, whether it's some people pay full tuition, other people, you know, are able to pay a partial, you know, tuition. And then we supplement that with, you know, maybe grant funding or mm -hmm. individual donors or something like that. That'll be awesome. I, I can't wait to hear more. So thank you. Like I said, I, I Definitely, you know, connected to the community and really love to see any and all um, improvements happening. So thank you. Um, let me see. So uh, Michael asks, do you think school curriculum is better in Michigan than in Pittsburgh? Hmm. So that's an interesting question. So um, so in Michigan, and we'll just do public school to public school. So I was a teacher and principal in the Ann Arbor Public Schools and then, you know, in the Pittsburgh Public Schools. And the, the one thing that I really appreciated about um, Ann Arbor, and Ann Arbor 
is mainly a university town, right? So it is a university of Michigan and just, it, 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 that really is the, the business that drives that, um, that city. And there was so much diversity in um, Ann Arbor where I see Pittsburgh, unfortunately, maybe it's getting a little better, but really more kind of black and white. And it's like, I don't feel like people in Pittsburgh, um, and again, maybe it is improving, but at least when we arrived here um, about 16 years ago, um, I don't know that people had a, a broad worldview. It was almost like Pittsburgh was the only place. Like you're going to grow up, you're going to stay in Pittsburgh, you're going to, you know, that, that people weren't thinking globally like they were in um, Ann Arbor. And I think that's another piece that I would like to bring to the preschool is that, you know, the world is your neighborhood. You are not, it's not like you are just gonna grow up. And I, and Pittsburgh is famous for this. People grow up, you move down the street, you, <laughs> all of that, but the world is really um, what you should be looking forward to. And so to me, that was the difference. And so I think mm. that um, that really does, you know, I mean, I think it holds some, you know, some children back in Pittsburgh when, you know, they're not exposed to the things that are really beyond um, the city limits. And to yeah. me, that's sad because um, your aspiration to me should not be like, oh, I'm going to go to Ohio. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it should be broad. And right. again, I think that, you know, when I was in, um, you know, Ann Arbor, it was really a, a more global perspective. And, um, you know, hopefully Pittsburgh is, is getting there. But I, I would think that's the major difference for me. Yeah. Right now, you said you went somewhere. Where did you go? Uh, when you're talking about imagine pinos, I always said I went there before. <laughs> okay. But what's the name of your uh, school that you're making? I don't know yet. I don't know. Yeah. So, um, you know, everything that we're, we're doing, it's associated with the Oasis project, but I, the name has not come to me yet. And so I'm thinking about it, praying about it, you know, as I'm planning, but the name, I just don't know yet. Okay. Um, let me see. I think that was the last question. Does anybody else have any questions? I know you all had some good ones in here. I have a question. Yes. Uh, this towards uh, Cynthia. Uh, what are the uh, kinds of other call programs that you guys have again mm -hmm. for Oasis? Yeah. So um, we, right now, so prior to the pandemic. Jordan, are you already looking at the journal? You can't ask her once you see <laughs> no, the it's questions. No, that, actually. It's not that. <laughs> That's like spawn camping in Call of Duty. Come on. Is, is that like My cheating? Note pen. My I'm going to answer your safe. question, Jordan. <laughs> so My um, note not safe. educational programs. So prior to the pandemic, we offered um, after school programs in two elementaries. Right now, we're doing a learning hub and we call it the neighborhood school and school stands for strategy created to help optimize online learning. And so for children who are at home, if you think about elementary age kids, um, you know, who are at home on their computers, if their parents have to go to work, they need a safe place to be. And so we have about 50 children coming to our learning hub every day. So they bring their, you know, devices from PPS and then we have hired academic coaches to work with them. So we do educational stuff. We have a transportation company called Oasis Transportation. And we mainly provide transportation for other nonprofits. So say, you know, um, the YMCA wanted to take their kids on a field trip, or we even do school transportation, like the Westinghouse cheerleaders. We've taken them just this fall to couple stadium for a couple times. I think there were maybe cheer competitions or, or something like that. So we have Oasis Transportation. We have Oasis um, Property Maintenance and Management, which is a, like a custodial company. And so we have contracts to clean buildings. Um, we have Everyday Cafe, which is a coffee shop. So it is um, open every day um, from eight to four and you can come and get coffee and sandwiches and soup. Um, we have a farm and fishery. And so um, in the farm and fishery, we have aquaponics, which we have you know, fish there that are fertilizing the plants. We have a hydroponic system and we also do urban gardening. And so we do a lot of classes with the children in our program, teaching them how to grow food and how to cook. And that cooking program is called Better Food, Better Me. So um, we want children to, you know, eat right so that we know that they'll be thinking better and things like that. 
Um, we have an entrepreneurship academy called Own Our Own, which for own, it's like us owning our own. And it is for African-American and other underrepresented entrepreneurs. And it's for people who have a business idea and we want to help them to be able to grow their business, um, you know, to scale it, to make it bigger. Or you might have an idea and it's like, how do I start this business? So we have a business academy. And then we recently launched um, Oasis Community Kitchen, which again is, um, we'll be doing some of the cooking and catering for Everyday Cafe, but we'll also rent the space to food-based entrepreneurs, which would be, like I said, a food truck owner or a caterer, um, someone maybe who's a baker, um, because by law, if you're going to sell your food, you should be preparing it in a commercial kitchen. And so um, those are the those are the, the various things that we we have. So that should be a good journal response for you. So <laughs> amazing. All right, Annie, let me see those. Nope. Or do you work with entrepreneurs, high school age entrepreneurs? Yeah. We have done a program that we call Literacy for Life. And so um, we ran the program once and we, we work with high school. We, we've actually done two things. Um, one, we used to have a program that we called the Maker's Place, which was for high school students that had an idea. And so say you, I don't know, you like making candles or you like making, um, there was a young lady who made, made um, bibs for, for babies out of repurposed fabric or um, mm -hmm. so we did that program for several years and then um, kind of when I talked about you know uh, executive directors collaborate with other organizations the YMCA in Homewood had a program that was very similar and so we decided you know to really focus on the elementary school place so we stopped that program but we did run last year a program called Literacy for Life and um, we may run that again and and we noticed when youth were coming to, um, to apply for jobs with us that a lot of times they didn't know what to do. And so they, they couldn't access the application online or if they were filling it out, they might do things like list their mother as a reference or things like that. And so one of the things that we knew is like, oh, if you go to Target or somewhere and you fill out an application like that, that, you know, you won't get a call back. I mean, someone would have just tossed it. And we said, that's not right. And so we ran a program that we called Literacy for Life, which was really training youth to be ready for life. And so we did things like career interest inventory. We helped them write resumes. We built communication skills. We did financial literacy. And then we placed them in two different internships. One was within the Oasis Project. So they could have been placed in you know, any of those business entities that I talked about. And then through that, the managers were kind of working with them, like getting them ready for the real world. And then the second internship was in a business that they were interested in, something that was aligned with their career interest. And so that was a program. Um, like I said, it was, it was funded um, by a, a, grant, a small grant that we had. It was $25,000. Um, and we were able to pay the youth to participate and all of that. And so it was kind of a standalone, but it was, it was really good. And so I'm not, not saying that, it, you know, we won't do it again, but it, we, we kind of piloted it that one time um, and haven't done it a second time. But, it, you know, I think it was great for the youth. One of the young ladies that went through that program is now managing our cafe. You know, she started that program. She then worked as a, um, as a barista in a cafe and she's now our manager. And so, um, you know, even other people have gone through the program have had success stories like, you know, really, you know, it was really good for them. So we may do that again, but we're currently not running that program. Fantastic. It sounds like school of career. <laughs> Just all, always, it never ends. That's incredible. Um, I'm trying to see. I keep looking to see if there's questions out here because my screen keeps popping around, but I think Jeremy's emailing me. Now, I asked about the entrepreneurship because we're going to have a competition in January as well, and okay. it will be for Pittsburgh Public School District um, or, you know, kids in the, in the district area and for school to career students. So we're partnered with the University of Pittsburgh to um, University of Pittsburgh's library department okay. to um, host the entrepreneur competition. So oh, we'll nice. get okay. you that information in case oh, great, you have great, students great. that are interested. Absolutely. We're we're considering putting our students in groups and in, in small teams, and they okay. can win up to I think it's five hundred dollars for the grand prize. I think it went oh, up nice. to, nice. Um, and then you know there'll be a you know first, second, and third runner up. But um, you know programs like that, like you said, you know teaching them 
you know, how to start their own business. A lot of right. students don't know where, where do I begin this process? Right. So that sounds excellent. You all are doing so much. I, when Jeremy first told me that you were coming, I'm like, I, I'm familiar with the organization. I wasn't as familiar with the Oasis Project. And the more I looked, the more I thought, wow, they're doing, they're doing a lot down here in Hollywood. So that's, it's really impressive, all the things that you all are um, taking on in the community. So congratulations with all of your success in those areas. Do you all have any um, additional questions? I know Ronique, I didn't hear from you today. You're awfully quiet. Usually I have at least heard from you. It's like when they're the little black boxes, I can't hear. I can't see you. So when I don't hear you, I don't feel that you're here. But does anyone else have any questions for Dr. Wallace? It's a lot of great information. I forgot where you were born. Clint, Michigan. Clint. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Are you able to re-say the name of the school you started, please? Mm -hmm. Yep, Genesis Christian Academy. Hey, okay, now y'all are definitely in the <laughs> You know what? <laughs> y'all aren't even trying to hide it anymore. I can't believe you, you posted snow it. The snowman. <laughs> I can't believe you posted it before we, you know, we finished. So I almost always do it a couple minutes before just so that yeah. in case it's like, hey, it took a while or there was an error or the internet wasn't working that it's up, but y'all Come, that's some shady stuff. Y'all trifling. But see, I think it's perfectly okay. Because, like, why wouldn't you ask those questions? I'm like, go get it. That's right. Well, that's the thing, you know. And you and I talked about this yesterday when we were talking about working in schools. It's like, nowadays, kids, you know, students don't have to know everything. They just have to know how to find the information. That's right. And that's, that's it. Right. Hey, you're that's the source right. of information. So that was my Exactly. Yeah. There's definitely so nothing wrong with that. Here's an add-on. So Genesis Christian Academy and our tagline was a great place to begin. And so I think for all those kids, it was a great place to begin. So again, for you entrepreneurs thinking about those, those yeah. taglines for your business. That, I mean, it is so funny because I'm listening to you. There's so many similarities in what you're doing with, um, you know, the programs that, you, you know, you have at, um, Oasis Project, and when you just said that the tagline was a great place to begin, we say CEOs, uh, which are career exploration officers, is where careers begin. So <laughs> it's like school to career, where careers begin, yeah. um, or where your CEO journey begins. So it's like there's so many similarities um, in what you know we do at OPDC with our you know our small group because we do the housing um, within our organization as well. OPDC just finished Oakland Affordable okay. Living, um, over 40 units in the Hill District, yeah. um, well, West Oakland community. So we just completed that project about a year and a half, almost two years ago. Yeah. Um, and then we also have um, property in West Oakland, um, South Oakland, um, and our offices are located in Central Oakland. So, you know, we have, always get this number wrong, but, you know, several like, you know, I'd say over 100 rental properties. And then we also um, do housing for first time home buyers uh, in the, the Oakland and West Oakland communities. So, so wait, I just have to say that Raynell got it. Like Genesis is the beginning. That was exactly it. It was a Christian school. They didn't get Genesis, that. Genesis <laughs> being the first book in the Bible. Right. Look, I thought that, I thought everybody had that one. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, look, I just talked through no, it. Sometimes people that don't get that. They're just like, oh, preschool is a great place to begin. But no. Genesis, yes. <laughs> yes. That, that, that's, yeah. that's what we were saying. CEOs begin their journey at school to career. This is like your first step to the begin to the rest of your career. Genesis, I'm sorry. I, I didn't realize yeah. that. Did everybody get that? Please tell me you did. Yes. <laughs> 